So hopefully the last video was enough to convince you that we can treat these tensor objects like vectors. So I'll just remind you we had that a tensor, in our case, is formed out of two dual vectors. We'll consider more general tensors shortly, but for now we'll stick with dual vectors. Which we saw was a multilinear map from the Cartesian product space, the two vector spaces, and elements of this space are the pairs of vectors into the real numbers. So if these tensor objects are vectors, we know that they should live in some kind of vector space. So what vector space do tensors live in? Well, if I now define the set HOM V cross V into R. So now we understand this means the set of all multilinear maps from this Cartesian product space into the real numbers. So what does this set look like? Well, we know its elements should be of the form dual vector, tensor product, dual vector. So considering the set of all multilinear maps now, we take one copy of the dual space and we tensor product with another copy of the dual space. And now we understand this elements of this set, this now called tensor product space, as being multilinear maps from the Cartesian product space into the real numbers. So this is called a tensor product space, seeing as it's formed out of copies of the dual space taken together with the tensor product, and elements of this tensor product space are the tensors formed out of two dual vectors. So now it's not going to be too much of a stretch to generalize this entirely. If we now consider the following Cartesian product space, we take the dual space, we form its Cartesian product with the dual space now p times, so we have p dual spaces here taken in this Cartesian product, and we then form that Cartesian product with now q copies of the vector space. So elements of this set is just going to be a big list, p plus q long, of p dual vectors and q vectors. So all we've done is formed a bigger Cartesian product space with an arbitrary number of vectors, uh, sorry, dual vectors and vectors. And now we want to construct the set of all multilinear maps from this whole space into the real numbers. So how do we do that? Well, we simply have to take p copies of the vector space taken in a tensor product and then q copies of the dual space. So now we can see that these p vectors are going to eat the p dual vectors and give us a real number and likewise with these dual vectors and these vectors. So elements of this set are now the tensors which we understand as being these big strings of maps. So we're going to have vector maps here and then strung together with some dual vector maps. These maps which live in the tensor product space eat elements look like this, a big long list of vectors and dual vectors and they just give us a real number. So now we can give this object a name, it's called the tensor product space for obvious reasons, which we denote T P Q. And we can think of this as having P vectors and Q dual vectors strung together. 
So elements of this tensor product space are tensors, which we understand as being multilinear maps from the Cartesian product space, which we previously constructed, into the real numbers. So this is the vector space which these tensors live in. We know it's a vector space because these are simply multilinear maps, which we've seen behave like vectors. So elements in this space can be added and scalar multiplied, and we just are given another element in the space, just another tensor. So we know we can have a basis for these vector and dual spaces, which allows us to express any tensor in the tensor product space in terms of its components. So if I write this as T, and now we're going to have P upper indices, which we can think of as corresponding to the, the vector part of the tensor, and then Q lower indices, which come from the dual vector part of the tensor, and then each of these indices corresponds to one particular basis vector. So I'll just write... So we're going to have P of the vector basis corresponding to each of these components, and then Q of the dual basis, so there's P of these, I'm not writing them all just to save space, and Q of these. So each of these tensor components corresponds to one of these basis vectors, and we now know that this whole thing is just a big long string of these linear maps. So this is how we can write the tensor in terms of a basis, and we'll frequently just drop the basis vectors entirely and talk about the tensor only in terms of its components. So now, just to finish, we can make a few identifications. This tensor, which we originally considered as being formed out of two dual vectors, we see it now lives in this tensor product space T02. In that it's formed out of two dual vectors taken in a tensor product. So we know that this then eats two vectors and gives us a real number. So we said before that tensors are vectors, well now we realise that vectors are actually tensors. If we look here, if we consider a vector, which we've said before is just a linear map from the dual space into the real numbers, we can view this as being simply a T10 tensor, since it's formed out of one lot of the vector space, so P is just one, and then likewise for dual vectors, which we saw are linear maps from the vector space into the real numbers. These are just T01 tensors. So this general definition now encompasses everything that we've discussed so far, and it's rather simple once you get your head around it. <laughs>